The best old time radio from people you trust. The Radio Nostalgia Network, where the oldies are still young. In the dream, you are falling, lost in the listening distance, as dark locks in. The Boat Hook by Sheila Hodgson. With Michael Williams as M. R. James, Brett Usher as Masterman, and David King as Professor Anders. The Boat Hook. I have an affection for the Scandinavian countries. There is a particularly fine cathedral in Trondheim which I discovered in the spring of 1904. The Norwegian guide informed me that the original Archbishop of Trondheim had been English and responsible for the spiritual welfare of the Shetland Islands. Well, well, I see no reason to doubt it. Oh, I beg your pardon. We were talking about Scandinavia. Yes, yes. Norway and Trondheim. And the boat. The boat. Oh, dear me. I should really have to leave you to make up your own mind about the boat in Trondheim Cathedral. Magnificent, I yes, I agree. It's a remarkable building. Yeah, I should date it around 1200, mm. though. Whether any of the original stonework remains... Well, do look at that vaulted arch. Uh, just a moment. Mm. It's curious. We left a door open. No, it's... It... Is coming from the roof. Oh, I devoutly hope that it is not a loose beam about to crash down on us. I should object to being discovered dead in a foreign church. <sighs> Difficult to see in the shadows. Only up there, hanging from the crossbar, it's, hmm? a, it's a model boat, isn't it? Good heavens, how very odd. What a beautiful piece of carving. You, you can get a clear view from this angle. <coughs> yes, I fancy those chains are making the noise as it swings backwards and forwards. Hmm. Must be in a cross draft. I don't remember that from my last visit. Now, why should anyone hang a wooden boat? Excuse me, please. Uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. You are speaking English. I'm also speaking English, so we understand each other, yes? I don't think we need a guide, thank you. Excuse me. I am sorry, but I hear you asking. What a boat? Uh, yes, indeed. Can you tell us? Of course. The fishermen hang these in church to ask for protection. A blessing on their sail. You understand me? Yeah. They ask the holy saints to keep them safe across the water. I see. Interesting. Are they always so elaborate? No. That one is important. That is the Anitra. Yeah, they paint the name of the boat on the side. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I can't quite make it out. Oh, dear. Why have I left my glasses back at the hotel? Can you read it? No, mm. oh, it's just about. Anit. Yes, and uh, Nitra. Uh, it's no good. Unfortunately, I'm short-sighted. All this will give me is a crick in the neck. If I may introduce myself, my name is Sorensen, Lars Sorensen. How do you do, sir? I'm Dr. James, and this is my friend George Masterman of the Masterman Press. It is my pleasure, Mr. Sorensen. You uh, have a holiday? Uh, part holiday, part business. Dr. James is well known for his ghost stories. They are being translated into Norwegian, and we are here to finalise the contract. Oh, a translation? Good. But uh, who translates? I do translations from the English myself. Ah, uh, indeed. Who will be making this translation? You probably know the man. There can't be so many academics in Trondheim who specialise in English literature. Oh. This is a Professor Anders. Uh, please? Uh, Professor Anders? Have you not met Sir Professor Jürgen Anders? Oh. <coughs> <coughs> Something the matter. He's gone over there. <coughs> He's sitting down in the <coughs> pier. Oh, very awkward. I wonder what one ought to do. Perhaps a glass of water. Yes, though uh, <coughs> we can get a glass of water. Uh, yes, there's a cafe nearby. But it's, it's, it's a question of being able to explain. Oh, James, James, uh, there's somebody <coughs> coming. I, I really think we'd better leave it to them. Oh, Lord, now there's a clergyman looking out of the vestry. Um, I suggest we go. Oh, well, as you wish. Oh, poor fellow, this is most unfortunate. Yes, perhaps it would be prudent to get out of the way. Mm. If the I man is like seriously it. unwell, as neither of us can speak the language. Like oh, dear, dear. <laughs> There is very little we can profitably do. Right. <laughs> Come on. <clears throat> Later in the day, we noticed an ambulance drawn up outside the cathedral. I cannot say I made any immediate connection then. Indeed, I thought no more of Mr. Lars Sorensen until a year later, as I sat in my study in Cambridge, 
awaiting the arrival of the distinguished professor and translator, Jorgen Anders. He's late. Oh, there's plenty of time. We're not due in the lecture hall till 7.30. Tell me, do you remember that strange person we met in Trondheim Cathedral? The old gentleman who practically choked when I mentioned Anders? Professional jealousy. Ah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. My dear James, we both know that hell hath no fury like an academic passed over in favour of somebody else. Where is the man? Excuse me, sir. Yes, Mrs. Craddock? This parcel has just come, sir. It's addressed to Professor Jorgen Anders. Bless my soul. What in heaven's name it gets dripping wet? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Has the postman gone? Wasn't bought by the postman, sir. I found it on the doorstep. Is it raining? No, Dr. James. What a revolting sudden mess. We cannot possibly give that to Professor Anders. I imagine some clumsy boy dropped it in a puddle. Yes, even the ink is running. Yeah, no, please, take it away, Mrs. Craddock. Take it to the kitchen and get it dry. Near the boiler might do it. Though I shouldn't be surprised if this brown paper it, didn't start tearing. It can't be helped. Just do the best you can. Oh, and that, of course, is the man himself. Oh, I hope that, it is. No, no, Mrs. Craddock. Get the thing out of here. Yes, I'll Dr. answer the James. door. Good evening, Dr. James. At last. Again. My dear Professor, please come in. May I have a coat? Come in, come in. You remember George Masterman, my puppet? That's clearly how are you, sir. Uh, pretty fit, thank you. Have you had a good journey? Bad crossing. I do not like the sea. You'll uh, take a glass of sherry with us? Mm. Well, sit down, sit down. They don't expect you at the lecture hall till half past seven. You are speaking, I believe, on Nordic legends. A fascinating subject. I find it, sir. Is this to be an extended tour of England? I go to several cities, yes. Now, uh, to speak plainly, you were content with my translation of your work? Oh, it seems excellent. Oh, yes, yes. Perfectly satisfactory. First class. I found your stories most curious. Tell me, Dr. James, do mm. you, you personally, do you believe in the supernatural? <laughs> my dear fellow, you shall have the answer I give everybody. I neither believe nor disbelieve. I merely collect evidence. Your sherry. Ah, uh, and the evidence proves... Nothing, as yet. But your mind will remain open. I certainly hope so. Good, good. I put to you a suggestion. Might it not be possible to move a solid object by paranormal means? No. No? Do you not think a, a violent emotion, a fierce hatred, some disturbance of the brain might actually cause movement? It depends what you mean. If I hate you so much, I pick up this decanter and throw it at your head, Professor. <laughs> Why, yes. Yes, my emotion has produced movement. <laughs> but if you mean can I cause the bottle to fly through the air of its own volition? My friend, there are many things we do not understand in this world. I agree. But the law of gravity is not one uh, of James, them. James, it's twenty past seven. Good gracious. We shall have to go, I'm afraid. I think you have... Could I speak yeah. to you, sir? You're not now, no, Mrs. Craddock. It's rather important, sir. It's about you-know-what. What? what? <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh. Masterman, will you take Professor Anders across to the lecture hall? Of course. It's on the west side of the quad. Yes, sir. I'll be with you in a minute. Yeah. Dr. James. Yes, yes. I'm in a hurry. That parcel, sir, addressed to your visitor. You told me to get it dry. Yes. Only I'm sorry to say the box fell to pieces. God, never mind. I put it on the kitchen table. I didn't like to touch the thing. Some kind of animal would it be? Oh, surely not. It's about a foot long, all done up in linen, and it seems to be heaving. Good heavens. Oh, if you wouldn't mind coming to the kitchen and having a look, sir. Yes, yes. There. Evening, you see? Bless my soul. Do you see what I mean? Get me a pair of scissors or a kitchen knife. Quick, quick. Oh, yes. What on earth? Oh, well, I never. Oh, that fuss, and it's only a toy. A lovely little toy boat. This is quite <laughs> extraordinary. Oh. See me being frightened by a kid's plaything. Has the foreign gentleman got children, then? I have no idea. No, 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 Mrs. Craddock. This will be a model. Used, no doubt, to illustrate some point in his talk. Oh, dear me. He may want it. Get me a carrier bag, please. Oh. It had better be delivered to the lecture hall at once. Right. <laughs> Where the devil is James? I don't know. Still, we'd better get on. Yes. Uh, 
gentlemen and visitors, we are honoured by the presence of Professor Jorgen Anders. Uh, Professor Anders comes to us from Norway and will speak on Nordic myths and legends, a subject which promises to be of great interest. He is an expert on Scandinavian mythology and has, I understand, recently published a Norwegian translation of the works of our own Dr. Montague James. So, without further interruption from me, I give you Professor Jorgen Anders. <coughs> No sign. He'll be here in a minute. He doesn't know he has to move the vote of thanks. Yes, yes. Good evening. Uh, I wish to begin tonight by considering the early Icelandic literature, the fragments of poetry still preserved in the richness of the Edda. Ah, I thought there of the time before Christianity James. had brought to the James, north the influence of the classical races. The alien mythology of Greece and Rome. May I have the first lantern slide, please? I do apologise, Mr. Sit James. down, sit down. What have you got there? It's for him. He may need it. A model boat. And the northern gods, as shown in the Edda, stood as massive as these Scandinavian mountains here. They flew over the waters and rode on the tempest. Professor Anders. They were superior to the elements, indifferent Professor to ordinary Anders. matter. They commanded the whole force of the universe. Professor. Yes, yes, yes. What? This has come for you. What the devil is it? I don't know. Oh, get a cloth, somebody. It's quite all right, Professor. Has it gone in your papers? I'm so sorry, so very sorry. Oh, let me. It was my fault, I'm afraid I interrupted you. Do continue. <coughs> Professor, you were saying? Yes. He's lost his notes now. Uh, uh, let us have the next slide, if you please. Uh, no, that is upside down. No, I don't think it is, Professor. Uh, no, no, of course not. Uh, now, here we have a, a, a glacier. Now, uh, from this place came rushing water, hardening into ice. And, and the gods, the gods, as we read in the Volsunga saga, the gods... <laughs> I wish people with colds would stay at home. Mm. It's generally a sign that the people can't hear you. Yes, the gods, uncreated and unseen, made a great giant from uh, the Could you speak up a little, Professor Anders? Yes, please. What have I done? Oh, no, no, nothing. Could you just speak a little louder? Oh. <laughs> this was to be the creation of man. In Valhalla, the hall of the chosen slain, we find... The dead, the, I suppose. Uh, we we, we, we oh, shall please, find gentlemen. those men who are slain in battle who were the special favourites of Odin. Oh, was Valhalla the same as the Greek Olympus, sir? Yes, as I explained to you... But surely not, sir. Olympus was the seat of the Greek gods. Well, Valhalla was more like the underworld, wasn't it? Yes, uh, uh, certainly. Well, it, 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 it's a matter of opinion. Odin was also known as, as Voten or, or Voden. Uh, why? What? I think we had better keep questions until the end. Odin and the gods also created other maggot-like creatures who lived in the mountains. <laughs> They were trolls and dwarfs and elves. They were dark and treacherous and cunning. They pursued with spite and malice anyone they thought. What they believed had, had in some way, done them wrong. Professor Anders, is something the matter, sir? I must go. I must go. I must go. But, <sighs> Professor Anders! Oh, Professor Anders! <laughs> And then he just ran out. But what do you make of it, sir? Make of it? Goodness knows. Bless my soul, this is a highly respected international scholar. I cannot believe he would deliberately let us down. I feel responsible. I introduced the man to college. I am highly embarrassed, and I am also rather cross. A nice hot whiskey, sir. Yes, that would be splendid, Mrs. Craddock. Thank you. Well, let me answer that. I suspect a deputation complaining about tonight's fiasco. My trouble, sir. This is quite intolerable. I must really protest. Good heavens. Dr. James, what can I say to you? I have no idea. Well, excuse me, please. Professor Anders. Professor Anders, it is nearly midnight. I am in the process of going to bed. You have wrecked what should have been an event of some importance in the presence of 100 students and several of our most distinguished dons. You came here, sir, at my personal invitation. If I call your extraordinary behaviour discourteous, it is the very least... But I must have my coat. I beg your pardon. You have this, I want this, my coat, my papers, where are my notebooks? I collected your personal belongings from the lecture hall. It seemed the only rational thing to do. Kindly wait a minute. There is a hat also. You had better come in. Where's my... Oh, dear me. Oh. You're soaking wet. 
Did you not take a cab? I have walk. It does not matter. Oh, look, please sit down. You appear to be ill. I really think I'd better offer you a bed for the night. No, I, I do not wish to sleep. Oh, it's no trouble, I assure you. My housekeeper is still about. I shall ask her to prepare the room. No, no, no. Um, I must go from here at once. Uh, if you insist. Your whiskey, sir. Oh, would the gentleman like a glass? No, Mrs. Craddock, you'll find a pile of things on the chair in my study. A hat, a coat, if you could bring them. Uh, yes. You must forgive me. My dear fellow, what on earth happened? It is not possible for an inanimate object to move. You have said this, yes? It is not possible. Excuse me, I fail to understand. Ah, Mrs. Craddock, thank you. Your coat, hat, and the briefcase. And there was this too, sir, the little boat. Take it away. It's yours. It came by post. Addressed to you. No, no, no. My coat, please. That is a, a present. Yes. A little gift for yourself, Dr. James. A, 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 a thank you present. Eh? Oh, you must have that. You must You must keep that. My, my briefcase. Uh, Professor uh, Anders, there is really no No, need. no, not at all. You're most welcome. I, I wish to repay your kindness. So good. So kind. It's still raining. Let me call your cab. Goodbye, my dear sir. Such a pleasure to meet with you. Goodbye. Wait. At least take my umbrella. Good gracious. Do you know, I begin to wonder if the man is entirely safe. Uh, Dr. James. Die, he's coming back. For God's sake, keep it dry. What? What did you say? He's gone, sir. Gone. And I could only suggest you lock up, Mrs. Craddock. Dr. James! <coughs> Dr. James! I don't want breakfast just yet, Mrs. Craddock. It's not breakfast, sir. You've got a visitor. What time is it? Half past eight. It's a young lady, sir, and she says it's urgent. Nonsense. What's her name? Anders. I think she might be some relation of that foreign gentleman who called last night. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Put her in the drawing room and tell her to wait. She won't like that, sir. She can scarcely expect me to come downstairs in my dressing gown. Are you Dr. James? I am. Good morning, madam. What can I do? My name is Caroline Anders. Ah, yes, a relation, I take it. And you speak English, good. What is the precise connection between you and Professor Anders? I'm his wife. His wife? Good heavens. I am his wife, Dr. James. And I speak English because I am English. I beg your pardon. How very stupid of me. But I had no idea the Professor was married. Jorgen has been married twice. I'm his second wife. Dear me, are you indeed? May I offer you some coffee? This is not a social call, Dr. James, and I object to wasting time. Where is he? Forgive me? Where is my husband? Am I likely to know? Jorgen gave a lecture at your college last night. No. He didn't? I regret to tell you that his talk was cancelled for reasons which I prefer not to go into. I formed the impression he was unwell. My husband has excellent health. If you say so. It is a thousand pities you were not at the lecture, Mrs. Anders. I had to visit my parents in Cambridge. I can't watch Jorgen all the time. With due respect, madam, neither can I. Are you sure he doesn't suffer from some nervous complaint? Certainly not. Why? What has he said to you? Very little. We have a very important lecture tour. We have to be in London by the 10th. Where did he spend the night? At some hotel, I imagine. No. I've been to the Royal Imperial. He checked in but never came back. He told the desk clerk he had an appointment with you at half past six. That is correct. I saw him then. And again, round about midnight. Mrs. Anders, you are naturally very concerned about this. I suggest we telephone the police. No. If he has disappeared... Don't be absurd. There is no need. No. No. I really think the police ought to be notified in case some accident... But it's your fault. You organised the whole event. You were responsible. When you saw Jorgen was ill, why didn't you send for me? Because I failed to realise anything was wrong until halfway through the proceedings. And as for calling you, quite frankly, I had no idea you existed. I am staying at the Royal Imperial. I shall make a note of the address. Thank you. And call me the moment you have any news. Of course, though why you assume it. Mrs. Anders? 
Mrs. Anders. What is it? Where did you get it? What? That object. I beg your pardon? Oh, that. The small boat. It was a present from your husband. I don't believe you. If you wish me to return it? No. Why should we care about a toy boat? You keep it. Keep it safe. It's nothing to do with us. And then she departed in a world of fur and indignation. Strange. You, you, you know she came here as well. To your office? Oh, yes. In, as you so aptly describe it, a whirl of fur and indignation. And she seemed to think that I, or the college authorities, or the publishing firm of Masterman and Son, had kidnapped her husband. Good gracious. Where the devil has the man gone? I can't imagine. What did you make of her? Ah. She's very pretty and astonishingly young. May married to December, don't you feel? The lady's handsome enough, but I found her lacking in grace and, dare I say it, with a disposition of solid granite. Shame. Forgive me. I really don't see what we can do to help. My dear fellow, we can't do anything short of going to the police, and she won't hear of that. I wonder why. Oh, by the way, we had a very pleasant notice in the Norwegian press. Would you care to see it? Mm, what? Oh, yeah, y yes, thank you. Yes, indeed. <laughs> My secretary has the file. Did you hear that? What? Someone coughing in the outer office. Miss Lindsay must have shown up a visitor. <clears throat> Miss Lindsay? No, oh, please don't bother if your secretary is busy. Nobody in the room. That's odd. Miss... Miss Lindsay? It doesn't matter, I assure you. But I definitely heard a kind of dry cough. Oh, well. Let me find this file for you. Good heavens. Uh, it should be somewhere about. Masterman, bless my soul. I must really ask you to explain. I beg your pardon? How in the name of wonder did that thing get here? What? What? There is a model boat on the desk. Oh. I'll... I'll ask Miss Lindsay. Masterman, I left that boat in my house less than two hours ago. I can only assume Miss Caroline Anders brought it to you. No. She must have done confound the woman. I said she might have it. I offered to give it back. But to return to my home and deliberately steal... James, James, Mrs. Anders had nothing in her hand. And I have never seen that boat before. Oh, but you have. Of course, the lecture hall. Earlier. Your study? Earlier, earlier. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm afraid my memory... It was hanging in the cathedral at Trondheim. Surely not. Examine the carving, the shape of the prow, and a name carved on the side. I haven't got my closet with me. Be so good as to read the name. An Anitra? Yes. I have the most horrid premonition. Anitra, well, it must be a copy, a, a souvenir. It's come from some gift shop for the visitors. Oh, dear me. I do so hope you are right. A dam? Well, put your finger on it. A, a kind of electric tingling. But wood does not conduct electricity, does it? The whole frame is shivering. Vibration, perhaps? By all means, let us call it vibration. Let me understand you. Th this boat was in your house recently. Two hours ago. I gave it to my housekeeper, who very sensibly desired to wash it on account of the dust. It feels dry enough now, and the shuddering has stopped. Dear God, can such things be? Kindly ask your secretary to bring me string, scissors, and quite a lot of brown paper. Certainly, as soon as she returns, though, though why... I fear we're in deep waters and meddling with a matter which could be extremely grave, dangerous. I shall return the boat to Mrs. Anders immediately, at the Royal Imperial Hotel. This is quite appalling. We shall be soaked. We must have walked half day. Dripping from the gutter. Turn up your coat collar. Allow me. Well, thank you. Oh, there's a cab. A cab! Cab! Well, well. What an extraordinary piece of luck. Yes. We should both have caught a very nasty cold. James. As it is, my socks are decidedly wet. James, what have you done with the parcel? I had it. I had it under my arm. Where on earth? You put it down when we took shelter from the rain. You've left it in the doorway. Oh, no. That will not do at all. Cabby! Cabby! Oh, something wrong, sir. Yes, indeed. What, what a 
stupid. Please turn around and drive back. Oh, right you are, sir. Where the to? The place where you picked us up. As long as you remember where that was, Governor. Because I'm loaded like that. Where was it? It was, uh, it was the doorway of a drapery store next to Taylor's snuff and tobacco shop. You want to go back to Hurry, now? man, hurry. It's not far. I must find it. Oh, dear me. Oh, dear. Dear, dear, dear. That didn't take long. All right, James? It isn't there. Good Lord. Are you certain? I mean, that's the same doorway. I'm positive. Yes, I put the packet up against the glass window. And the thing is gone. Stolen? Oh, come, 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 come. Uh, yes, much too strong a word. No doubt some passerby has picked it up. That is just possible, I suppose. Well, my dear fellow, it hasn't walked away by itself. So, back to my office. Yes, where to, sir? The Royal Imperial Hotel at once. Uh, but you really want to go there this time? If you please, as fast as possible. But, yes, James, sir. there's no point. Why bother? I have a certain dreadful unease. Until we find Professor Anders. Though if what I suspect is wrong, if what I fear is entirely mistaken, uh, then there is no point in the journey at all, thank God. But Porter, he said it must be kept away from water. I think you must be catching a feverish cold. This way, I think. Yes, yes, sir. Two and two. Two and three. Two and four. Pray God, this is a delusion. I have the most appalling fear. We must find Professor Anders. Good morning to you. Anders? Bless my soul. Now, that is quite extraordinary. You wanted to see my wife. Please, gentlemen, step inside. Uh, How are you? Oh, well, yes. Uh, we've been wondering where you were, sir. Uh, please, where should I be? I'm staying at this excellent hotel. There's a problem. Your wife is looking for you. Ah, no, not possible. Some misunderstanding, I think. Caroline is here with me. At the Imperial? Mm -hmm. You're together? May I ask since when? Oh, one hour, perhaps two. <sighs> well, we've uh, obviously made a mistake. What's that noise? Excuse me? Someone is coughing. Irritating, yes. The person in the next room has a cold. Professor Anders, I have no wish to intrude on you or the lady, but certain curious events make it necessary. Can either of you explain... Please, we wait for Caroline. That will be better. At the moment, she's taking her bath. Oh, uh, you would like bath. a drink? Oh, dear. Hmm? I'm afraid we're inconveniencing you. This is evidently the wrong time. Uh, James. James. We must call back after lunch. Oh, not at all. You must eat with us. I'm sure Caroline would wish me to invite you. Oh, dear God. Caroline? What in heaven's name? Caroline? Caroline, what is it? It's locked. You must open the door. Oh. Why don't you help me? Put your shoulder to the top panel. Try to break the hinges. It's all right, Mrs. Hunters. Your husband is coming. Please calm yourself. Oh, no. Oh, dear God. What was that? What did she say? I can't see anything for steam. Lift her out of the water quickly. Masterman, get a doctor. Get the house. Of course. Get somebody for pity's sake. Please, hold her hand. Very, very carefully. Please, please, no, she's fainted. Yes, just fainted. Yes, that's... She's just fainted. She had not just fainted. Caroline Anders was dead. Particles of talcum dust drifted across the mirror. And in the reflection for one fleeting second... I thought I saw a boat rocking on top of the bath suds. But then suddenly Professor Anders gave a heart-rending cry and crashed to the floor, after which we were all too concerned to check the matter. Then, of course, there was the question of Caroline Anders' funeral. Good morning, James. Oh, my dear, I'll help you. Have you seen today's paper? Mrs. Anders is to be buried on Tuesday. Ah. Ghastly tragedy. Heart failure, I imagine. Don't you? I imagine. What did I imagine? No, this is pointless speculation. And besides, I could be wrong. I suppose as a matter of courtesy, we shall have to go. 
You think it necessary for both I of think us? it vital that I should go. He asked if I believed in it. I beg your pardon? The supernatural movement of objects. <laughs> and you said no, rather wittily, I remember. Something to do with emotion and throwing things at your enemy's head. Why didn't I listen to him? You did. Why should Professor Anders be so frightened of a model boat? <sighs> well, I presume it means something to him. Oh, yes. Oh, dear me. Yes, Masterman. It means something. Uh, the parents have a house by the river. I checked the address. The ceremony is at 2.30. Shall I call for you at 2? We can share a cab. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. <coughs> Listen. Shh. Someone is coughing. It's cold out here in the churchyard. Can you see? Hmm? Can you see him? Anders? Yes, he's over there. Not Anders. That other. What? Well, I can't see anyone I know. Oh, dear me. But I so much hoped you could. Why? It doesn't matter. And the blessing of God remain with you always. Amen. 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 Oh, they're moving off. Shall, shall we join the party going to the house, or would you rather look at the floral tributes? Quite a number of people have sent wreaths. James? James, what is it? Dear God, I'm not hallucinating. No, no. Neither is it a trick of the light. It is there, isn't it? Huh? Against the wall. Between the crosses of lilies and the brick. I don't know what you mean. Oh. Oh, yes. You can see it, too. The boat. But that's impossible. Try to get hold of it. For pity's sake. We cannot let Anders catch sight of this. The people are watching us, James. Don't. Stand in front of it. It can't be the same one. No. Then we have two boats called Anitra. Let us be rational. I left that object in a doorway. It is possible, possible, mind, not probable, that some person discovered the thing and carried it here. Yes, of course. Of course. Well, yes, why not? A logical theory. Oh, dear, 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 passer by, who happened to know Professor Anders and chanced to hear of the funeral, and being no doubt a fellow Norwegian of benevolent intent. Oh, come, come, come. It is not even halfway reasonable. Do use your common sense. But the only other explanation... Does not bear thinking about quite mm. dear heaven he's coming this way no, no. dr james thank you for your card professor anders you have all our sympathy in your great loss Indeed. so kind you need not trouble to hide it from me sir i beg your pardon i have already seen it uh, the flowers yes yes it's so many and so beautiful Please stand aside. I know the boat is there. <sighs> Forgive me. Is there a special meaning? No. You can be frank with me. So good of you to come. Professor Anders, I once told you I have an open mind. If we are face to face with some kind of mystery... By no means, no, no. I give you my word. As you wish. I should have preferred a few honest facts. Excuse me, you will excuse my English. I do not always understand you. A pity. I am not ungrateful for your kindness. But I'm willing to trust me. What can I say? The boat. A private joke. Hmm? A piece of childish malice. Caroline would have known what to do. She was such a strong person, Caroline. Caroline has always managed my life, you see. Caroline would have told Please. me how to... Will you come this way, everybody? But now I understand. Yes, I have been very foolish, so weak, so stupid. You know, it is almost as if Caroline herself was speaking to me. Yes, yes. At last I realize what it is I have to do. Please do join the rest of the company. There's a meal waiting at the house. Don't you think we should go now, James? Uh, excuse me, are you, Dr. James? Yes, indeed. I hope you've got a drink. Thank you. I'm Caroline's mother, Mrs. Vickers. How do you do? My friend, George Master. Uh, madam, I'm so sorry. Yes, that... yes, yes. She's gone, my lovely girl. I can't cry anymore. That part of it is finished. Could I have a word with you in private? By all means. Please, follow me. 
There's nobody in my husband's study. I only met your daughter once, Mrs. Vickers. She struck me as the most beautiful creature. How did he do it? I beg your pardon? Anders killed her, didn't he? Bless my soul. You're under some astounding misconception. Dear me. Of course, I quite understand in your present state of grief and shock. You were there at the time he murdered my darling child. She's Vickers. Just tell me how it was done. Good heavens, you must rid yourself immediately of this extraordinary delusion. I assure you, there is absolutely no reason to suspect... No. His first wife died. So I believe a tragic coincidence. They said it was a boating accident. She was supposed to have drowned in a boating accident. I never wanted Caroline to marry the man. That's because he was rich and famous. My Caroline could have had her pick. She was wasted on that... that... Do you realise Jorgen Anders was old enough to be her father? Uh, uh, indeed, yes, yes. I told her to forget the money all those vulgar jewels he kept buying for her. She was a foreigner. Why did she ever go to Norway? She had a good home. Uh, Mrs Vickers, I do sympathise. It must be hard to come to terms. I gave her everything. She was my little girl. And now she's dead. Murdered. Mrs Vickers, what I have seen and what you have just told me confirms my impression that Professor Anders adored his wife. More, I am convinced he was totally dependent on her and he's devastated by her loss. <laughs> he talked to you, I suppose. Smooth, cunning lies. James, the cab is here. Oh. Old, evil hypocrite. If you insist. But as for killing his wife, I really must protest. By the time she died, Professor Anders was in the room with me and George Masterman here, who will confirm the fact. Isn't that so? Uh, what? When the accident happened, we were all together. Uh, that's true, Mrs Vickers. He never left us even for a moment. Besides, the bathroom door was locked. You won't help me. Madam, there is no way in which we... Good gracious. Where's that smoke coming from? Yeah, I can smell burning. Is something on fire? <coughs> It's full of smoke, good Lord. It, it, it's getting into the house. The wind must be in our direction. I can see flames. There's somebody out there. Oh my God. Anders. Huh? It must be man. He's trying to burn down my house. Stop that. Stop that. What in heaven's Stop name? Can... He's trying to burn the boat. That's lunatic. There'll be an accident if a spark lands on the wooden fence or near that rubbish. We'd better put a stop to this. Yes. Come along. Don't! You're trying to kill us too! Dear God! What is that woman doing now? She's getting the boat away from Anders. Uh, she's pulled it out of the fire. I let go! Give me that! I chose a modicum of sense. Let's give the lady credit. That should stop the fire. Not in the water. Not in the water. It must not go in the water! As we watched, Mrs. Vickers ran down the garden, crossed the grass, and hurled the blazing boat into the river. There was an acrid smell and smoke rose hissing from the surface. Dark oily bubbles drifted downstream, catching and blackening the weed. With the main source of heat gone, the bonfire began to subside in collapsing ash and billowing smoke, gusting across the lawn in a pulsating cloud. The air became full of tiny specks, like a swarm of malevolent flies. In the meantime, Anders had gone to the riverbank and was trying to fish the boat out of the water. Suddenly he slipped and fell in. Someone in the river! Quick, sir! Help! Help! No! Let me help. Get a pole, a rope. Hurry! The current's sweeping him away. He's going to drown. Well, here's a rope, and they're launching a dinghy. I might be able to reach him from here. If you'll hang on to my waist. Right. To prevent me from falling into the water myself. Uh, can you manage? Now take the rope. Uh, Professor Anders, hold on to this! Uh, he's missed it. Dear God! Help! Anders, don't struggle. Just stay afloat. They've got the dinghy out. Help! For heaven's sake, don't panic, man. There's no danger. You're going to be all right. The boat is coming. Yes, yes, they'll have you out in a moment. Please, keep calm. The boat is coming for me. And uh... Anitra! Even as I watched, he flung up his arms and disappeared beneath the water. I cannot to this day understand it. For of course the dinghy was coming for him. It was a bear ten yards away. Unless in his distress Professor Anders imagined some quite other and alien vessel. But I prefer not to dwell on the notion. 
A year later, at George Masterman's insistence, I found myself in Trondheim again. Your book has been a great success here. Mm. There's even some idea of bringing out a second collection, using the rest of your stories. And another translator. Well, uh, of course. That's why we have agreed to meet Mr. Nielsen. Poor Jorgen Anders. Oh, he was very unpopular here. I gather the yacht accident was distinctly suspect. Several people thought Professor Anders had murdered his first wife in order to marry the beautiful English visitor. Ah, uh, uh, there's Nielsen. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, good morning. May I introduce Dr. James? A pleasure, my dear sir. I understand we may work together. Perhaps you have read the Anders translation? I have. A great scholar. It's such a pity he is dead. Indeed. Tell me, Mr. Nielsen, do you think Professor Anders murdered his first wife? Yes. Good gracious. Bless my soul. You knew the lady? Anitra Anders. A little. She was very timid. She did not like the sea. When he insisted she sail with him, Mrs. Anders hung a small boat in the cathedral, as the fishermen do, praying the good saints to protect her. A pious hope. It seems to have been misplaced. I did not know her very well. I knew her father much better, uh, Lars Sorensen. Lars Sorensen? Upon my word, we met him once. So? Well, for what it is worth, uh, Sorensen always believed his daughter had been murdered. Now, that's very interesting. Did you hear that, James? Now, perhaps Mr. Sorensen took the model boat and pursued Anders to England. Oh, impossible. Well, if he really hated the man and I'm suspected... sorry, what you suggest is quite impossible. Why? Because Lars Sorensen died in Trondheim Cathedral over a year ago. On what date, Mr. Nielsen? Oh, I am forgetting. Does it matter? Probably not. But I have a horrid presentiment. But all right, not her father, but... Imagine some other member of the family bent on revenge, carrying the boat to England. No. You can't be certain. I assure you I can, Mr. Masterman. The little boat is hanging in Trondheim Cathedral at this moment. Do you wish to see it? If you would be so good. Oh, uh, please follow me. Uh, but be careful crossing the road. He led us through that magnificent building, and there it was, swinging slightly in the draught, creaking a little. A model of the boat Anitra. This time, thank goodness, I had not forgotten my glasses. We studied the thing in silence. Then we thanked Mr. Nielsen and left. It would have been pointless to trouble that good man any further. But what alarms me? A source of a certain deep unease. Anders had asked me, would it not be possible to move an object by paranormal means? I had rejected the idea so emphatically, but now... You see, there are scorch marks along the side of that little boat in Trondheim Cathedral, and part of the hull has been burned. Upon my word, you could swear... Someone had tried to set fire to it. Michael Williams played M.R. James and Brett Usher, Masterman, in The Boat Hook by Sheila Hodgson. Sorensen, Peter Tudnam, Mrs. Craddock, Joanna Wake, Professor Anders, David King, Caroline Anders, Cyril Jenkins, Nielsen and Chairman, Eric Allen. Students, Neil Roberts and David Lerner. The director was Martin Jenkins.